Hey guys, welcome back to the Shipmate YouTube channel. This week, I'm joined by Rob Boss, painter extraordinaire. And we're going to be talking to you about how he gets his artwork printed and how he ships it out to his customers. So thank you, Mr. Boss, for agreeing to come on our show this week. Oh, thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah, so we're really excited to learn, you know, more about your artwork and, you know, what it takes to ship, you know, both original paintings and prints and, you know, how prints are made and, you know, if you could give us some more insight into what you do. Sure. Um, well, if you start with, well, I'll start with the, like, an original piece of artwork because um, those obviously are very delicate. They can't be reproduced. If they get damaged during shipping, that's it. It's, it's lost forever. So... Yeah. Um, and then I'll go on to the prints because obviously prints you can reproduce should they be damaged. Yeah. Um, so for something like an original piece of artwork, uh, I use oil on stretch canvas. Um, and canvas is a pretty durable product itself. But um, one thing you want to make sure, um, like when I ship, the painting goes into um, a, like a clear cellophane type of wrapping. And that's what I put it in first. And then I put the uh, styrofoam corners or some type of foam corners on each side. And I make sure that it fits in the box as tight as possible. From there, I'll uh, put bubble wrap or some type of packing material, whether it's paper or peanuts, uh, in between there. And then on each side, I'll have a piece of cardboard that I'll cut out perfectly that lays uh, right over top almost perfectly and then from there box it and then ship it because the whole idea is you want uh, the pain to arrive to whomever it's going to as safely as possible so when they get it um, there's not uh, you know the frame isn't broken so during shipping should it be dropped or stepped on there or, or whatever there's plenty to protect the piece that's in there um, so that's that would be how I would ship uh, an, an original, and obviously depending on the size, and, yeah. you know. Yeah. Do you ship uh, in the frame or out of the frame? You... I ship out of the frame when I'm out doing um, an original, because most people, when it comes to an, an original piece of artwork, they like to put their own frame on there to fit the decor in their house, um, and framing can can be a little bit, of, you know, of an, an expense. expense. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, they're just getting the canvas, uh, and with prints, sometimes I, you know, I, I buy my prints, my uh, frames for prints from Michaels, and they have like a couple of different variations, and I can offer those to um, the customer. Say, hey, if you want it shipped framed, here's what it will cost, and here's the frames that I have available, or if I can just ship the prints, depending right. on what they want, is how I will go about doing that. Yeah. So how do you go about you know, having something printed on demand. Like, I know a lot of people that are selling online, you know, some people are selling things that are based off of original works of art. Mm -hmm. You know, you have people that are selling their artwork on pins and stickers and mugs and canvas and all kinds of things like that. And I was wondering, how do you go about taking your original piece of artwork uh -huh. and then creating, you know, both your prints and possibly even merchandise out of that. Like, what's the process look like to get something from that living artwork into other formats? Use a company called Taylor Photo in Princeton, and they make what's called G clays of paintings. So I'll bring the original painting to them, and um, there's a photographer there. His name is Ron, and I highly recommend him if you're in the area. Um, what he does is he shoots the uh, piece of artwork in a raw format image. So this way it captures all the colors and variation in the painting to make it as much as close to life as possible. From there they take that file and it goes to like a computer analysis where they'll look at the image and then they'll have the painting up and then they'll slowly adjust whether you know, highlights need to be brighter or shadows need to be darker or whatever it is to get it as close to how it looks in real life as they can. So they're like technically like 99.9% .9 accurate because 
you know, it's yeah. almost impossible to make a perfect, you know, um, print. But they, uh, as far as I can see, it looks exactly like what I've painted. So from there, they'll print it on like a, uh, a high quality parchment paper. It's very thick. Um, and they usually put like a one inch border around it because when I uh, sell a print, uh, a G clay, I number them and I sign them and date them on uh, when they were uh, printed. And from there, depending on what the buyer wants, I'll either just ship the print, um, which Taylor Photo will actually uh, do for me um, if I ask them to. And obviously, I have to pay them to do that. I mean, in those cases, I normally will spend the extra 20 bucks to have them ship it because I know it'll get done right. It's what they do every day. Um, or if I, let's say, buy a stack of them, if I'm buying like, if I'm only going to make like five or 10 prints of a particular piece, then I'll have no choice but to ship them myself. And I use a very similar method as to what they use based on what they told me how they ship them. So, But have you, have you ever done anything like had it made into a shirt or a mug or anything like that? Like, have you used it in another medium besides just having a print done? Oh, yeah. Actually, I have. Um, I have a profile on Fine Art America. And um, I do make a Christmas card every year. Uh, I'll do a painting that sh it won't be available for print uh, unless I donate it to a charity. Um, it'll just be available for Christmas cards. So let's say if you were looking for a holiday card um, for to send out to your family members, you can go to my website and there's a section under greeting cards and you can pick which one you want. And I do a new one every year and you can buy a pack of 10, 20, yeah. 30. And from there, they will actually print it out, and and it comes real nice in a box and everything, uh, and and then ship it right to your house. So, um, which makes it yeah. a lot easier for me because I have, you know, right. I, I'm not stuck in the middle. If something happens during shipping or whatever, they handle everything, you know, since they're right. Yeah, and there's a lot of services you can use that do things like that, like Teespring's one that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that will do on demand printing and then on-demand fulfillment and although that's something we don't do here at shipmate it's something that a lot of people you know engage in and there's a really thriving market i know i was watching tiktok the other day and on tiktok there was somebody that said you know everybody's out here saying that art school's you know a stupid thing to go to but yet you can take one image create that image and make thousands of products out of it mm -hmm. like endless amount of products you can make mugs pencils stickers uh paintings you can make uh blankets you can make t-shirts you can make anything your your mind can imagine out of art because art's such a versatile thing mm -hmm. and it can really become you know quite pro pro profitable and take on a brand of its own mm -hmm. so you know it's it's always interesting to see how somebody can take something like painting and turn it into something like a greeting card mm -hmm. or you know Maybe one day, you know, you make some mugs for Mother's Day, you know, mm -hmm. or something. But, you know, it, it's, that's the beauty of art, is that art is something that, you know, as long as you own the image and you have the rights to that image, you can take that and reproduce it on countless things and really build yourself quite the product catalog. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, it certainly has, has helped. And one of the things I noticed with greeting cards is, especially around the holidays, and, um, you know, people are kind of, I don't want to say tight on a buck, but their money is going elsewhere. You know, there's a lot of expenses yeah. around the holidays. And they're more than likely willing to spend if they like something that I paint, especially for, uh, you know, around the Christmas season. Um, you know, like I did like a pine tree. I did a, an evergreen with like um, uh, yeah. lights on it uh, this past uh, holiday season. And a lot of people like that. They're more willing to spend ten to twenty dollars to buy a packet of cards to have that image, and they're you know you know getting something they can send out to their family members and friends than they yeah, are maybe unique. spending yes, and then rather than spending maybe a hundred bucks to one hundred and fifty dollars on a G clay, right? Because um, they're more expensive to produce, so they you know, obviously they cost more. You know, all these different things allow you to put art into other mediums mm -hmm. that can put it in the hands of more people. That's right. You know, but you know, earlier, like you were mentioning how you packed, you know, these G clays. I'd love to hear more about, you know, 
how to properly pack a canvas because I know there's other people out there that are watching this video right now and they're going, you know, I make art or, you know, I have, you know, canvases that I'm mailing out or I'm even mailing out pictures that hang on the wall. Mm -hmm. How do I do this? How do I do this safely? How do I make sure the corners stay intact? How do I make sure it doesn't get smudged? Like, could, could you outline this process sure. for us? What I'll do is um, I'll go back to Taylor Photo and I'll buy those clear cellophane wrappings that they um, – every time you get something printed for them, they'll put it in that because it protects the image. And I'll buy several of those in the size that I need to ship my prints in. And Because um, that's the most important thing is you want to protect the image from, like you said, from right. getting smudged. So you want to put that in there. Um <clears throat> Wrap it nice, so this way, you know, it's uh, where you have to fold it and tape a corner in to just make it nice and neat. And then what uh, what I do, and it's actually what they do too, is they take pieces of cardboard that are uh, probably slightly bigger than yeah. the, the image, <clears throat> and they'll stack them. They'll, they'll take three, and they'll put them on the bottom, they'll tape them together, and they'll put the uh, the print on there. And then they'll take another three, tape them together, and put it on top. And then, uh, you know, take a piece of tape around each side, you know, one for the front and back, to keep it from bending. Because you don't want somebody to get a print. Because right. no matter how much you write, do not bend. It's, the UPS man is never that nice. Yeah, he's I mean, never that nice. Yeah. You have to assume these 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 people who are delivering are in such a rush to complete their orders that you know they don't really have time to to read it, you know, um, because they're getting thousands and thousands of packages every day. Uh, so it's really the responsibility of the seller to make sure that what they're sending is going to arrive safely. Mm -hmm. It's not the responsibility of, you know, the, whatever local company you're using, whether that be the post office or FedEx or UPS, they're just there to make sure it gets to its destination. How it gets there is completely up right. to you. Yeah, no, what, I've, what I found really striking, and I can't believe the conversation is going in this direction, is that the methods you just outlined for shipping a, a painting mm -hmm. is very similar to the method that is used to ship comic books or baseball cards mm -hmm. or, you know, basically any form of, like, printed material that needs to be protected and shipped. So if you're shipping a comic book, you put it in a sleeve with a cardboard backer on each side, and then you tape it down the cardboard to pad the edges, mm -hmm. right? And usually you put that in waterproofing. But it's the same thing. It goes in a polyurethane sleeve, two things on each side, tape down, protect the corners. Mm -hmm. Baseball cards are a similar thing. They go into usually a soft sleeve that goes into a hard sleeve, and then is sandwiched between cardboard, mm -hmm. some sort of waterproof container. And it sounds like with these prints... You know, you're doing a similar thing. You're putting them into that that cellophane sleeve. You know, yes. that, that perfectly fitting cellophane sleeve protects it from smudging. And then you're sandwiching it between cardboard so that way all the edges are protected and it lays flat. And then you're putting something on the edges, right? Correct. Yes. So you're putting styrofoam, if I heard you correct? Yeah, you can. You know, I, I usually get it at a local hardware store. You'll find corners for edges, and they're like foam or styrofoam or just some sort of foam that just fit right on. You can adjust them, yeah. put them right on the edges, and then pack it in the box, and yeah, off you protect go. Protect the edges. So Absolutely. You protect the edges. You know, there's this, like, real similar train of thought here, like I said, between all these different mediums of, you know, basically paper-based products. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it seems like they all have something that protects the image, something that sandwiches it to keep it flat, and something that protects those edges. That seems to be the common thread. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, people spend a lot of money on art, and um, especially when you're buying an original because the, origi the original is the yeah. original. And uh, if that ever gets damaged, it, ca it can't be replaced. Like, I could repaint something that I've done. Um, it's not the same. It's but never it, the it same. will never be the same, you know? Uh, and um, in fact, you know, I, I don't like doing that. I've had people ask me if I would repaint something that I have already sold, and my quite, you know, I'm, my answer to them is always no. You know, I, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I can't painted do that. it once. <laughs> that, that was enough. N yeah. You know, how yeah. would how would you feel if you bought an original piece of artwork and then yeah, like a year later, there's someone you go to someone's house and they have 
an original piece of artwork by that artist that was ad- almost identical to yours. I mean, yeah. it, you would feel kind of cheated, you know. Once it's once you ship out original, that's it. That they have the final copy of if you want to say the yeah, final piece so- of it. So, you know, the last thing I really just wanted to do with this interview is I really wanted to just give you a second to talk about your art, mm-hmm. what you got going on, how people can find you, you know, and just give give you the soapbox for a little right. bit. Well, yeah. the easiest way to find me is if you went to paintlikeaboss.com. Uh, from there, I, you know, I have uh, the, the opening page. You can go to the link to where my Facebook is, where I post the most. Uh, there's a few paintings that I have posted on there that I've done on the first page. On the second page, there's uh, some charity work uh, that I'm very involved with, um, especially with the Bikers Against Child Abuse. Um, I actually go around the country uh, every season, and I, what I do is I don't I, I make a painting special for the Bikers Against Child Abuse, and then I donate frame prints to them and sign them. Uh, and then they auction them off at their right awareness events, and that's probably if you, that's really the only type of events that I'm at that I'm live at are always charity events. Uh, it's like where I like to host my art, and I like it, you know for it to mean something. And what they do really means a lot to me. Uh, there's not one paid member of that organization, mm-hmm. so they really just do it for the right reason. And they're a great bunch of people, and they help out a lot of kids, and they ensure that. The children that they help don't fear the world that they live in, and so um, you know that's that, that's pretty much pretty much me. And I do everything from still life to nature scenes to the occasional portrait. Yeah. You know what? I want you to remind me that we should put a link to Bikers Against Child Abuse down in the description in honor of Mr. Boss right here. You guys can make a donation. I know he'll greatly appreciate it. I'll greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Thank you so much for tuning in this week to check out our new episode. I hope that you guys got something out of it. Uh, You know, I want to thank Mr. Boss for coming here again. Check out some of his artwork. It's really cool. So, guys, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and we hope to see you next week.